basically, I was caught off guard. Straight away I should have said no, I'm busy, I speak at Christmas, and slammed the phone down. But I didn't. Mm, hello? It's me, Bill! Bill? Your brother! Oh, Bill! <laughs> How's, uh, um, what's her face? Yeah, your wife and the baby. <laughs> Sam and James, yeah, they're fine too. Good. Listen. Then he hit me with... You are formally invited to spend the weekend with me, Sam and little James at our holiday home by the sea. <laughs> It'll be fun. And that was it. The damage was done. Everything is packed and ready. My version of packing for a weekend's break is a plastic bag containing a toothbrush, underpants, socks, jeans, t-shirt and sweatshirt. The clothes I've got on now will do for tomorrow. I also bring a bottle of vodka, slightly watered down, cleverly disguised as a bottle of spring water, which I intend to keep to myself, to help me through this ordeal. Bill? Sam? Who's that? That is James, your nephew. He's supposed to be a baby. He was, eight years ago. <laughs> so, in I jump. They have one of those people carriers. A bit much for just the three of them. Still, how they spend their money is up to them, I suppose. Little James ignores me and bashes out for what was to be the first of a thousand times. Five minutes into the trip, Sam tells me with great pride that James has a recorder competition coming up. And he'll be up against ten-year-olds. And his chosen piece of music is Happy Birthday. Play it again, James, for your uncle. No, please don't. He's won two trophies, six medals and countless certificates. He's by far the best for his age in his school, isn't he, Bill? Mm, oh, easily, by far. Mm. Wow. It's night time when we finally arrive at the holiday home. It's not only dark but misty, so we drive at a snail's pace for a few minutes till we pull up at what looks like a container. The type lorries pull. Here we are! Why have we stopped? This is our holiday home. We all get out of the bus and stand shivering by the container whilst Bill fumbles for a key. Well, you coming in or not? I'd rather not. The lights are turned on and sure enough, it's not a container. This thing is what Americans call a trailer, and we call them caravans. Static caravans. The type that doesn't move but blights the countryside. I can't believe it. It's a hideous mixture of threadbare carpet and mud-coloured formica cupboards. And the smell. Well, what do you think then? It's our holiday home. No, it's a caravan. I help bring in the bags, cases, boxes and portable TV. Sam closes the curtains and turns on the 30-year-old gas fire. So where am I sleeping? Hoping for the address of the nearest hotel. Uh, the table folds down. Don't be seriously, where am I sleeping? So we all sit around at what will later be my bed, holding large mugs of tea. Now the topic of conversation has turned to food. About time. How about a curry? Oh, bring it on. OK. It's not the quaint rose-covered cottage I had in my head, far from it actually, but hey, at least they have an Indian takeaway. For another hour or so, we sit still, making small talk, and I start to worry. How do they know what I want from the curry house? Shouldn't they ring the order through? It'll be midnight before we eat at this rate. I have to say something. Right, who's having what, then? Oh! <laughs> the curry! <laughs> yes, the curry! Bill gets up and makes his way over to one of the many heavy boxes we carried in from the bus. He carefully breaks the taped seal on the Pampers Baby Wipes box and yells out the night's menu, holding up the tins as he does. Uh, lamb korma... Uh, chicken tikka, uh, Sainsbury's hot curry, Sainsbury's mild curry, or mild Tesco vegetarian with chickpeas. Mm. What about the rice? Oh, we usually have sliced bread when we have an Indian. Saturday. It's only 7am. This happy birthday thing, is this some kind of hint? Anyway, both Bill and Sam are still asleep. I pull back the nearby tattered curtain just enough to see the dark clouds looming. Then I see the full horror of our location. OK, it's bad enough being in this container, but there are containers everywhere. It's like Eddie Stobart's yard out there. It's no good. I can't sit here any longer. I told James I'm just popping out for some fresh air and a paper. A few steps away from the caravan is a small patch of well-scuffed ground designated for dog walking. It's here I see the fat tattooed lady sucking on a roll-up watching her pit bull crapping its little heart out. I rapidly move on and eventually find a shop. To my surprise, they don't just sell newspapers, they seem to sell everything and have stolen the supermarket gimmick of buy two for the price of one, but in reverse. The papers they have are two days old. 
I ask a fat, untattooed woman scowling behind the counter if they had anything... Say, a bit more modern? Like today's? Today's papers will be in tomorrow. I make it safely back to the caravan. I tell them about the two fat ladies and the pit bull. I think they were expecting a punchline. Bill and Sam are very organised and to prove this, they produce a two-page, typed, itinerary of this weekend's events. It starts with the sentence... Arrive at our holiday home between 8 and 9pm, unload MPV, draw curtains and turn gas fire on. And so on. Saturday AM, newspapers. They're two days old, today's won't be in till tomorrow, the fat, untattooed woman told me. <laughs> we know. He says. And he's serious. After the papers, stroll to the beach. Let James have a run. So that was it. Back up to the fat, untattooed woman's overpriced shop for two-day-old newspapers, then the 45-minute stroll to the beach to exercise little James. Once there, Bill and Sam head straight towards some flat-ish rocks to the back and read the old newspapers. I go looking for seashells, whilst James runs in circles for his exercise. Little James is called over by his mum, who is now holding a camera. Now she wants me. Right, you squat next to James. For the sake of peace, I go down on bended knees and with a smile which I'm sure looks more like an evil grin, say, cheese. Sam now hands me the camera. Uh, it cost over £300, so try not to break it. I'll do my best. They take one picture of me with the son of Sam and I'm forced to take 20 pictures of them. After the shoot, I hand the expensive camera back undamaged without even a thank you. Bill produces the itinerary sheet and a pencil crosses something off, checks his watch and suggests we head back to the holiday home for a bite to eat. Back at base camp, I attempt to light this piece of trash called a gas fire to defrost. Nothing is happening. I could kick it. Everything all right? Yes! Sodding thing. Shepherd's pie sound all right? Yes! It's not going to light. Right. Plan B. Pretend it has. Oh, that's better. I stand up in front of it, rubbing my hands. Nice and warm. If anyone comes near me, I'll quickly bend down and turn it off. Besides, they both look too preoccupied in preparing lunch and bothering me with my imaginary fire. Oh, oh that's so good. I really want them to know I can operate a gas fire on my own, that I'm not one of life's sad failures. Oh, I'm really warming up now. That's good. Sod it, she's cottoned on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm much warmer now. Pretending to turn the thing off. I did it. I fooled them. Sam's now at my side. You look flushed. Yeah, yeah, I know. She then confirms with Bill that he changed the gas bottle before our stroll to the beach. No, no, I didn't change it. I was going to do it in a minute. Why? Oh, here we go. So, how did you get a flame? The bottle was empty. There was just enough gas in the gas bottle. I was, I was very lucky. But that's not good enough for Sam. No, she now has to bend down to feel if this piece of useless hmm. junk is hot. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> It is stone cold. It wasn't on at all, was it? <laughs> of course it was. Why would I lie? She goes back to the kitchen area, looking at my damp socks and jeans as she does. Bill makes his way outside to change the gas bottle. As he walks past me, I can see pity in his eyes for his stupid little brother. Sam is at the sink, washing up. James is looking for his recorder. He won't find it till we leave tomorrow evening. So what now? Hoping he'll say... Why don't me and you go down the pub? Let's get slaughtered! He doesn't, of course. He produces a tatty brochure showing a picture of a model village. It's called Tiny Town. I feel like crying. Little James loves it here. They've got a little church and everything. Everything? You've been there before, then? Oh, about ten times. They have a little train and a little station, too. But what's there for us? 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 Yes, us. Adults. Is there something we can get a drink? Oh, we take a flask. You knew that's not what I meant. So when are we going? Bill studies his watch, then his itinerary. Uh, 16 minutes. How long do you usually spend at this tiny town place, then? Oh, no more than four or five hours. Four or five hours? It's half an hour's drive to the world-famous tiny town, and the main topic of conversation is... Well, where did you last have it? Which makes the journey go quick, and we're soon pulling up in the car park. We enter with flask in hand. We're here for the duration. In no time, the expensive camera makes another appearance, which Sam gives to me as all three squat close together, so I presume she wants a photo. I was bent down, about to take another shot when I heard... Oi! You with the camera! Off the grass! Stick to the path! It was the old bloke who took our money. I tried to ignore him, but he shouted again. Oi, you! I said off the grass! I took the photo and handed the expensive, unbroken camera back to Sam. I now approach him. 
Don't talk to me like that and stop saying oi. It's not nice. Oi! Stick to the path or you're out. I know your thought. Do you now? I'm so frightened. Hang on. This was my chance. I step off the tiny path again and with my damp shoes start to hack up the sacred turf, <laughs> healing and kicking bits of grass all over the place like a Morris dancer on acid. The old git looks like he's about to keel over. I even poke my tongue out at him. I'm a child again and I'm loving every second of it. Luckily for him, Bill restrains me. God knows what I'd have done next. Blown a raspberry? Stuff your grass! I say as Bill escorts me away. Sam and little James quickly follow. That's messed up the itinerary. Both Bill and Sam weren't as upset as I thought they might have been. So what now? Saturdays we go to the clubhouse. It's exclusively for the owners of holiday homes. So? But it doesn't open till seven. Another two hours away. They sometimes have a children's entertainer and a great big bear called Bert. Don't they, James? He's not a real bear. <laughs> You'll like it there. They sell beer. Real beer? On Saturday nights, they even have a singer or some kind of top entertainer. Oh, it's all good fun. <laughs> I'll sort the tea out. Whilst Bill opens the tins for dinner, I grab a towel and head off to the end of the caravan to the shower room. I take this opportunity to finish off the last of the spring water, which went quick. I hope little James hasn't been drinking it. I take the plunge. It's, it's freezing. Tea's ready. Little James turns off the telly and sits cross-armed in eager anticipation. How does a Chinese sound? Ah, so, I reply. Sam is now by my side with my meal. Uh, we don't expect racist comments at the table. Out comes the Hovis and Flora. We're all ready, at last. It's five to seven. Bill and Sam have novelty hats on. They have no shame. But I don't care, we're off to get slaughtered. <laughs> there are a few people already drinking, all with these ridiculous hats on. The place looks okay, better than I imagined. On the pine-clad walls are signed photos of all the superstars who've appeared at this prestigious nightclub. Never heard of them. Right, what's it to be then? The question I've been waiting for. I'll stick with a Guinness. Bill orders two pints of the black stuff, a glass of white wine and some fizzy blue stuff in a bottle for James. Whilst he pays for the drinks, I carry the tray over to our front row seats without spilling a drop. Boys and girls, come on! Let's have you all up on the dance floor. Let's make some noise and welcome our best bear friend. Yes, everybody's favourite bear, Bert the Bear! That was a bit lame, but it worked. The small stage is instantly packed with excited little ones wetting their pants. Look, here he is! Is that Bert the Bear? I ask, pointing to the only seven foot tall dancing panda. Yeah, that's him, all right. <laughs> Isn't he great? No! Surely the kids can see through this farce. It's quite obviously the barman in a costume. Both Bill and Sam wave to their little boy. Of course he doesn't wave back. I want to tell them to stop. It's our time now. I'm trying to enjoy my pint. But I just put up with it. After nearly half an hour of Bert singing and dancing, it's time for him to say goodbye to all the boys and girls and get his useless fat backside behind the counter of the bar again. Now, boys and girls, would you all be seated? And put your hands together and welcome the world famous Jocko! So the world famous Jocko runs onto the small stage in a puff of smoke to the rapturous applause of the audience. He wears a top hat with a plastic flower sticking out of it. His multicoloured jacket looks as though 20 kids have thrown up on it. To finish his comedy costume, he wears a kilt and plastic trainers. Good evening, boys and girls. I'm Jocko. Shall we all have some fun together? Would you like that? Not really. He starts by pulling silk hankies that are hidden up his sleeve. How does he do that? Be quiet. Wow. Now he has balloons. Could he make animals out of them? Of course he does. The first being a snake. This brings the house down. Did I see you in Vegas? Strange, no one laughed. He's caught my eye, so I give him a little wave and blow him a kiss. And now, I need a volunteer. Jocko, the true professional, takes his time picking his victim. From the back of the room, he declares he has his victim and runs to the front of the stage to where we're sitting and grabs me by the ear. Ah! ah Sort off! I tell him. He twists my ear even harder. It really hurts. Ah! ah. Don't mess about with me, we man. Get up and do as I say. 
I can see why he does the posh voice. He rubs his sweaty little hands together, pretending to think of something nasty to do to me, although he might not be pretending. Shall we play a game, boys and girls? Ha! <laughs> I know, just the thing! Then he goes to his box of tricks. I can't move. I'm paralysed. After a moment, I manage to crane my neck and look up for him. Jesus Christ! He's standing silently above me, wearing what appears to be a rapist's mask, holding a bloody gun. I attempt to get up, but I can't. He kicks me down again. Now, boys and girls, I want you all to help me and my good friend here. Can you count from ten to one very slowly? I start to shake. I try to remember the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, hollow be thy name. No, that's not right. I don't want to die! Bang! As the joke gun, you know, the one with the flag on it saying bang, is pushed with great force into my temple. That's not magic. Let's all say a great big thank you to my assistant. Wasn't he a good sport? Jocko kindly helps me up. Well, I say helps. He grabs me by the hair and pulls me to my feet. I'm sweating and shaking like a leaf. Now be a good boy. Sit down and shut up. I will, Uncle Jocko. After three quarters of an hour, he disappears in a puff of smoke, although I do see him run off the stage, but I clapped anyway. He was good. To be honest, I thought he was a bit of a blockhead. I honestly don't know my brother Bill at all. I had the strangest dream last night. Little James is quietly sitting watching the telly. No sign of mum or dad, again. I look at my watch, it's half past six in the morning. I put the kettle on, throw a tea bag in a chip mug and transform my wobbly bed back into a wobbly table. I ask little James if he wants some tea too, but he points to a carton of orange juice. For the first time he smiles at me. The sun is actually shining this morning and after we finish our drinks, I tell James I'm going to the beach for a walk to clear my throbbing head and, do you want to come? Something odd happens. Okay. He spoke. We put our shoes and jackets on and I leave a note for the other two telling them where we've gone. Time now 5am. So off we go. Into the sunshine, me and my eight and a half year old nephew, James. The beach is empty and my nephew heads straight to the water and in no time it's up to his knees. I, like a homing pigeon, head straight for some flat-ish rocks to sit down on. As I watch the little lad splashing about, I feel yesterday's shell digging into my backside, so I take it out and again study it. I bet little James knows all the shell's names, so I call him over and hold the shell out in the palm of my hand. What'd you call this, then? Hand. I place my unnamed shell back in my pocket and silently sit back with the warm sun on my face. Back in the caravan, the telly's on, and little James sits happily watching it. Both Bill and Sam study a map, but I'm too frightened to ask why. Now, there's this place we go to. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lovely little fishing village. So... You can see the trawlers come and go. Watch them unload their catch. That's interesting. Yes, it, it's very interesting. When did you last see a fisherman mending his nets the old-fashioned way? Hmm? Good point. So, the fishing village it is, then. We'll head off about 11. Something smells nice. Must be something from another caravan. No, it's not. Sam is preparing the picnic basket. I go to investigate. Bill's in charge of the tin opener. What's it today? Italian? Mexican? Smells good. Thanks. It's not Italian or Mexican, but Irish. Irish stew, to be exact. He pours two tins of the stuff into a large plastic container, then seals it. He makes it look so easy. Irish stew? I know. I can read. Is this, uh... <clears throat> Is this our lunch? Mmm, we have it with bread. What don't you people have with bread? How do you heat it up? We have it cold. Cold? I leave it there. I know when I'm beat. Wakey, wakey! We're here! Uh. Oh, just about to nod off. I look around me with one eye half open and we're in yet another car park. Bill goes to get the ticket while Sam takes the picnic basket from the back of the bus and then helps her sleepy child out into the warm sun. Bill returns and places the ticket in the window. We've not even left the car park when Bill gives me the benefit of his local knowledge. Look, there are some of the fishing boats. Pointing to some rusty skips 40 yards away. Yes, very nice. Is all I can think of as a reply without offending anyone. There are indeed some old fishermen at work sewing nylon nets back together again and we stand embarrassingly close to one of them, silently staring. Then we move on. Did you see what that fisherman was doing? 
James won't answer you, you fool. Did you see what he was doing? Bloody hell, it's not James he's talking to, it's me. Of course I did, we were standing there for half an hour. <laughs> That's something you don't see every day. As Bill and Sam tell their little boy all about life on the open seas, I move on to the next. It's just like the last one, but with a different name. Sunny Side Up. What kind of a name's that for a boat? Then to the next, Teacher's Pet. These are racehorse names, no wonder our fishing industry's dead. So what else is there to see and do around here? Well, what did you expect at a fishing village? Go-go dancers? I meant, are there any boats out of the water, you know, dry docked? We could examine a few hulls. Well, that sort of thing interests you then, does it? Boat hulls? Well, yes, actually. Liar. Liar. I'm not lying. Honest to God. I even crossed my heart with a wet finger. I have to have the last pathetic word. We found a bench at the picnic area, not far from the dry docks. Bill is mum and hands out the plastic plates, cups, knives and forks. Next comes the Hovis and Flora. And now the main course, a plastic tub full of cold Irish stew. So I sit, twiddling my thumbs as the gruel is dished up. Say when? Too late, a spoonful's already gone in. When? As the second spoonful hits the base of my plastic bowl. Sure? Oh yes, I'm sure, all right. Good health. It's no good, I can't eat this muck. How to get rid of it without offending? Hmm, it won't be easy. What am I on about? Easy peasy, here we go. <laughs> then I fall off the bench backwards, pulling my gourmet meal with me. Oh, Christ, it's all over me. The embarrassing silence is deafening. Oh no, my dinner. It fell off the table when I sneezed. I tell them this on the off chance they missed it first time round. Oh, oh what a pity. I love Irish stew. I really love it. All that meat and veg. I must be hay fever. I know I should stop, but I can't. Uh, uh, tissue! Oh, oh, I've sneezed again. Why on earth couldn't I just say, OK, I'm not hungry and it smells like baby sick, instead of performing a Norman Wisdom routine? I look down at myself. What a bloody mess. I think we should go. It's just after three when we arrive back. As we pull up alongside the caravan, the fat, tattooed woman with the pit bull waddles past. Sam is first out and slams the bus door. Off for a dump! What? The dog, not Sam. The rest of us get out, that being James and me. The stew has started to harden. I crack as I walk. I have to get in fast, I think the pit bull has smelt me. I head for the little damp bathroom with yesterday's dirty clothes and change. When I come out, I find Bill carefully placing the tins back into the Pampers box. Want a hand? It's okay. I sense an atmosphere. Where's that? Packing the cases. Going home. Was it something I said or did? Well, I'm nearly ready. I know. It's here I have the idea that can get me back into their good books. I'll find little James's recorder. I'll be the hero of the hour. Me and James watch telly together till Sam comes out of her room. I especially want her to see this. I'll show her. I stand up and exaggerate a stretch. I need some clean air. Mm, that didn't sound good. I take the two steps to the caravan door and linger. They'll see me in a different light in a couple of minutes' time. I'll be back in a moment. Who knows what I'll find? I reach up to where I threw it. It's gone. But it can't have gone far, it's round, so it rolled. It has to be somewhere, who'd steal it? A musical seagull? It's no good, I have to climb up. Look at all that moss. There it is. Crawling along the roof, I'm like that Spider-Man, till it's in my reach. Yes. Yes, I have the treasure in my fist, the Holy Grail. Now, for the glory. You'll never guess what I found. Only went out to get some fresh air. Ta-da! It was under the holiday home. Would you believe it? Actually, underneath. Must have rolled off the bed. I wait for the applause. It doesn't come. That was a bit of luck. Me finding it right underneath. Oh, this is embarrassing. Is he going to give me money for finding it? You see the door? Yeah. The glass door. <sighs> Sam gets up and goes to join James in his room. Look, before this goes too far, I have to ask, did you see me through the glass? Yes. Why did you put my son's recorder on the caravan roof? For the first time, he's called it a caravan and not a holiday home. I didn't. Please don't lie anymore. 
I'm not. It, it was under the caravan. Then why do we see you climb up on the roof? Because of the moss, of course. Oh, I, I see now. You thought the recorder was up there. <laughs> then I give up. I crack. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I only wanted to help. It's true. I genuinely wanted to help in my own stupid little way. But if this is how you're treated for helping, I won't do it anymore. What is up with you? Me? It's you lot. Nothing. I just thought I could make things better between us. You've messed things up from the moment we arrived. You've been rude and selfish. I didn't ask to come here. Yeah? Time for some home truths. You said you had a holiday home. Then what is this? This... this is a caravan. Not even a nice one at that. And it smells. I was expecting a house. A cottage, bricks and mortar with roses climbing up the wall. Not a tin can with damp running down it. You have a real problem. I know! With that, he storms off to the safety of his room and family. And I... storm off nowhere. I have slept for over an hour and am woken up as we turn into my road. My flat. The flat where my Lara, my wife of 18 months, took off and left me, leaving a note on the kitchen worktop saying how much she hated me. My flat. My happy home. Are you coming in for a cuppa? No. no uh... <laughs> Clutching my plastic bag, I climb out. I stand by Sam's open window. We all give uneasy smiles. Look, um, sorry about... That's okay. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yes, we will. Next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I look to little James. He's about to nod off. I tell Sam, I'm sure he'll do well in his recorder competition, and to say goodbye for me. Thanks. I kiss her on the cheek, then lean over and shake Bill's hand. I have one question still lingering, and ask it. Why did you invite me to your holiday home? Does there have to be a reason? Suppose not. I stand back. He looks in his rearview mirror. With that, they move off. I stand and wave till they turn the corner at the end of my road. But they don't wave back. Never mind. <laughs>